Holy moly, two days in a row I remembered to plug in my microphone. Hey there everybody, good morning, welcome to today's installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. My name is Tom Rigsby, your host, with the microphone plugged in and the whole nine yards. How about that? Although I will admit, the coffee cup is empty, <laughs> and so it might be a short show today. Uh, hey, how are you doing this morning? I hope you are doing well. Leave me a comment down there to say good morning. Is it cold where you are? It's a little bit chilly here. Alexa, what's the temperature? Nah, she couldn't hear me. It was 40-something this morning when I got up. That's cold. I live in the South for a reason. I don't like that kind of stuff. Hey, uh, when you get here, whether you're watching live or on the replay, leave me a comment down there. Let me know that you're here. Just say hi. I always like that. This week we've been talking about... Um, I'll, I promise I'll pull it down tomorrow and show it to you. It's taped to the wall up there. This this quote, this saying that I've got on the wall, has kind of been the foundation for what we've been talking about all week. Hey, co yeah, coffee shop show. Well, let me forget to mention that. So this saying is, stop living your life, stop letting life happen to you and start creating the life you crave. What I want to talk about this morning is, is it okay to crave more? I used to struggle with this. I used to think, you know... Contentment is is some goal to achieve, right? And that if I'm if I'm not content where I am, then I'm not happy. And if I can't be happy, then what's the point? And so that whole line of thinking got me to uh, this pursuit of trying to find contentment. And so, in at least in my mind, being content and craving more are on opposite ends of the spectrum. How do you? How do you balance that? How do you accommodate or, or take those two opposites into consideration? Well, so here's what I came to understand in kind of the way that I, I put things out there now. We have to be informed by the past, content in our present, and um, desire more for our future, right? Know, know about the past, content in the present, desire more for the future. Because... If we just sit here, what, take anything, for example, take an apple, big, bright, beautiful apple, sit it on the table and just let it sit there. Did that apple reach its full potential? No. Is it big, bright, and beautiful? Yeah, sure. What's going to happen to it if you just let it sit there for a week or two? And that's what's going to happen to you if you just sit there, right? Sit sour and soaks, what I call it. You just sit there. And you become unhappy and, and discontent. So it's this idea of more, this idea of craving something more that drives us toward the future. Now, it's kind of like the saying, right? Uh, let's, let's see how many people get this right. Have you ever heard the saying? Uh, let's see. Money is the... Yeah. So root of all evil is how most people finish that, but that is incorrect. Love of money is the root of all evil. The love of more, I would say, is the root of all evil, right? Pursuing it is not. And so what happens very often is we have no plan, right? We're just letting life happen to us. Whatever the boss says today, that's what I work on. Whatever the customer comes in and demands, that's what I create. And so we're just wishy-washy back and forth. When that happens, we have no goal. When we have no goal, we have no finish line. When we have no finish line, we've got nothing to work for, nothing to ex expend effort on, and nothing to reward ourselves for when we accomplish it. So if there's no reward for this just existence, what's the point? Right? You have to have that craving, you have to have something more that you are pursuing in order to find happiness and fulfillment. Remember, happiness and fulfillment are a result of progress. Progress is what? You should know this by now. Movement toward a goal. 
Well, I can't move toward a goal if I don't have one. All right? So there you go. It is okay to crave. In fact, it is more than okay. It is necessary. It is necessary to crave more in order to get you off your butt and into gear. Whew. Now, like I'm on the soapbox this morning. Right? Set that goal. Create the vision. Here's the words I want you to use. In the book, right? Oh, man, where'd they go? So I told you yesterday. I've been telling you about these for years, right? But in your, in your notebook, we talked about yesterday, the top of the page, start a brand new page and write these words. I envision a time when... Dot, dot, dot. I envision a time when... And then just start writing your description. That phrase, I envision a time when, will do wonders for your mind. Put your mind to work in describing that condition that you're trying to create. And then, you know what? Whether it's the universe conspiring to deliver it to you or just particular activation, you will start seeing those things occur just like that, right after you write them down. And that can be one or two. It can be 20 pages worth. Doesn't matter. Write them down. All right. Brooke says, it's really hard to be hopeful in planning the future if you are disgruntled and discontent in the present. Yeah. I, I Well, I, I agree and I disagree. We'll see where this goes. I agree... Let me start with a disagreement. I disagree because it is it is that disgruntled state that might motivate you to envision a, a better time. So I, I disagree from that perspective. I agree from the perspective that if you allow the present circumstances to clog your thinking, then you can't see a better time. Now, here's how this plays out for me in my coaching. And I, I've used this. Um, I've used this little saying a couple of times, right? I can't teach you algebra until you understand arithmetic, right? And I can't teach you calculus until you understand algebra. So we've got to get through some of the small stuff to get to the bigger stuff because you can't, you just can't see it yet, right? So maybe instead of envisioning a time where you know, whatever is happening, where, where you're the president of the United States, envision a time where you're on the city council, right? Start small, and I don't know why anybody would want to get into politics these days. That's just the example that came to mind. But start small and move toward the goal, because your perspective changes. Think about when you're taking a walk, and you're walking up a hill, right? Is the valley on the other side of the hill there, when you're walking up the hill, of course it is, but you can't see it. Well, that doesn't mean it's not there. It just means that from your perspective, where you are right now, it's not possible to see it. So you have to take some of those steps and make some of those milestones in order to change them. That's why goals are just goals. We don't carve them in stone. We write them in a book that's got 200 pages in it so we can flip the page and write a new one tomorrow. Whew, I got to stop. I got to save some for the coffee shop show today, which, by the way, is coming up at nine o'clock today. And my good friend Eric Mulford and I will be at Old Town Coffee. Stop by and see us. We love that live cafe audience and the good folks at Old Town Coffee. Enjoy it also. If you can't come by, then at least watch us. You can go to thecoffeeshopshow.com. That takes you to one of a myriad of places where you can watch the show live and uh, enjoy the conversation that goes on there. I have no idea what we're going to talk about, but for some reason I'm thinking I might continue this topic. <laughs> it's kind of how we tend to come up with topics. All right. So, so I hope that's helped. I just, I envision a time when just start a page with that and see where that takes you. Um, that just that phrase can open up a world of possibilities to you. Never know what what might come out of that. I'd love to hear what some of yours are. I'll take some of mine and put them in the comments in a little bit. Share them with us here if you want. Put them out in the universe. Let the universe do its job to bring them to you. I'll see you on the coffee shop show at nine o'clock. Back here in the morning at seven o'clock for a new installment of 
<laughs> Seven minutes in the morning, I almost called it Talk Radio for Entrepreneurs. You guys have a great Wednesday. I'll talk to you in an hour or so.